But this afternoon, a conversation about Ghana's innovation system, which faces a lot of challenges, including fragmented science, technology, and innovation institutions, poor coordination of research and development activities, and poor linkages between research and industry. Even though Ghana has moved a step further in its quest to concretize innovation and research, which is at the center of the country's socioeconomic development agenda, making innovation the fulcrum around which the national development would revolve, it has suffered a number of setbacks over the years. There's been proposed strategic uh, technology areas, including agriculture and food processing, sanitation, waste management and waste recycling, oil and gas. Other areas are biofuels, green energy, health and pharmaceutical information, communication technology, robotics, mining and minerals processing and manufacturing but how do we effectively exploit the benefits of these focused areas that's the thrust of our conversation this afternoon uh, joining me for this conversation is professor georgia obing is dean of the faculty of mechanical and chemical engineering at the college of engineering at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Also joining me for this conversation is Dr. Erika Shali. He's with the Center for Scientific and Industrial Research, and his research interests include machine learning based nanophotonic systems design and optimization, optical neural networks, chiral plasmonics, integrated intelligent nanophotonic uh, devices, and smart systems. And I think it will be uh, intensive training in technologies including precision, machining, uh, digital manufacturing and applications. I mean, these are issues that we'll be looking out for in our conversation this afternoon. I'm grateful for your time, gentlemen. Thanks for having me. Now, let's start by understanding how much of importance scientific innovations are to the nation's development agenda. And I'll start with you, Professor Bing. How important is this to our national agenda? All right, so um, as we wait for Prof to join, let me throw this back to you, Dr. Ashali. How much of importance is scientific innovations to the nation's development agenda? Okay, um, uh, thank you once again, and thanks to your viewers. Um, when we talk of scientific innovation, um, mostly we look very far away uh, from uh, the very normal thing around us, uh, the very basic things that we are taught from our infancy. And uh, it is important that we take note that innovation doesn't begin at the very highest level of academia. Uh, it starts from infancy. And nation building also uh, is built uh, with the youth uh, and actually infants who will uh, grow through the ranks, uh, rise through the ranks to become um, a responsible uh, adult for the country. So um, when you ask what is the, um, the importance of innovation to nation building, I will say that it is the basic atomic fragment for uh, nation building because uh, we cannot do without it. Uh, in a case where we have our young ones not being innovative, the country will collapse. So uh, basically, um, uh, innovation is at the core of uh, national development. Yes. Now, you do a lot of research in machine learning based. I mean, you say you do nanophotonic system designs, optimization, optical neural networks, chiral plasmonics, and integrated intelligence. What is the role of these innovations uh, to the development agenda? Okay, great. So, um, uh, none. So nanotechnology is basically the science that deal with uh, the small things, uh, uh, the atomic scale structures of uh, the human existence. So um, at the nanoscale, we are able to re-engineer nature and bring into being certain technologies that otherwise uh, wouldn't be. So um, 
for instance, uh, to go directly to the point, uh, I, have, I have a device, right? Uh, I have invented a device that is able to, um, say, detect and categorize uh, uh, viruses and bacteria, including the COVID-19 virus. So uh, these applications of technology are very direct to, to nation building. If uh, this device is scaled up, it means that it can directly assist and uh, improve the, the, uh, our collective fight against uh, the, the global nemesis uh, COVID-19. So um, there are several other uh, innovative engineering ideas that have direct um, um, bearing on, on uh, nation building and growth. Uh, when we move outside the country, most of the uh, countries that have developed uh, first uh, built their innovative and technological infrastructure uh, before they stepped, uh, they, they lived forward in, uh, in the uh, growth of their uh, various uh, states. So, um, yes, the things we do have direct uh, economic benefit and health implications uh, to, to the country. And uh, uh, that's why it needs such attention, yes. Thankfully, Professor Obing has also uh, joined us uh, right now. Professor Obing, we want to understand what we're talking about this afternoon, scientific innovations. How much of importance is this to our national development agenda? Um, thank you very much. Is it Loretta? Or My name is Aisha. My name is Aisha. Oh, thank you very much, Aisha. Um, scientific are very critical to development. We are a developing country, and um, everybody's aspiration is that uh, we, we move from a developing to a developed country. And therefore, we need all the brains within the country, our educational system. We need to continue to develop new ideas. Uh, we need to develop new approaches so that we can create businesses and industry. Every economy depends on industrial development and growth. That is where you know you would create jobs uh, for people to earn decent incomes. So if you succeed in creating jobs, there is the need to expand those jobs. And that is where innovation is very, very critical. Because innovation has to do with newness. Newness of technologies. You know, technologies make things quite quite easier for people. So if you are working in a manufacturing company, you need a technology that will help lighten the bed, you know, and also enhance, you know, the timing and uh, uh, create systems for efficient use of energy so that at the end of the day, the business or industry would make profit and uh, expand. That is what we need, and therefore innovation is very critical for our development. Every economy thrives on innovation. Uh, we usually would cite the industrial countries because that's where innovations are demonstrated, and you could see the countries that are developed are more technological-based. Um, uh, the economies are more based on science and technology, and uh, there are lessons that we have learned from those economies. Uh, when you come back to our country, Ghana, uh, I always tell my students that, uh, you know, thank God uh, we have so many problems in our country. And the youth, these are the conversations that they engage themselves with. Where we have so many problems, it means we have so many solutions to develop. These solutions are, are technological solutions, right? Because if you have problems, then you need to solve them. Now, the technological solutions, are each one of them is a business on its own. So if you create a solution in the health sector, it becomes a business in the health sector. 
if you create a solution for educational improvement, then it becomes a business where people can be engaged. And therefore, we need to create more, more technological solutions and that to drive those and to improve, consistently improve upon them, you need scientific innovations to do that. It's quite interesting the way you put it. Uh, whilst we're trying to create scientific uh, solutions, then we're trying to also create solutions to our job problems, which has been one of the biggest we've had to deal with. But definitely, we appreciate the efforts being made by um, the KNUST, for instance, uh, the uh, CSIR, for instance. But that does not also erase the fact that we're faced with a number of challenges, which you've rightly hit there. Let's, I want us to understand what these challenges are, which is hindering us from getting things right. I mean, being more innovative as a country. Well, our challenges are numerous. And like I said, um, these are development challenges, right? Uh, if, if you interview uh, students of development studies, they will say simply, development is more of everything for everybody. So not until we are able to create more services, not until we are able to create more products for everybody, uh, there is always a shortfall. And we feel that we are underdeveloped or, or developing. Um, the challenge we face is that we need to build the critical mindset, we need the critical mass of people who are well-educated, who would be committed to national development, who understand and would uh, use you know, scientific innovations to help uh, develop our country. And so it's what the university seeks to do, to train young minds, right, so that we could engage in research we can expand the frontiers of knowledge and we could, uh, through our research, develop technologies so that we have a technology-based economy. If our economy is thriving on traditional systems, then we might not be able to exchange. We will have challenge in exchanging our products, a national community, because it's basically traditional. Traditional systems uh, are good, but they are not uh, very modern and enhanced in terms of uh, uh, the energy requirement in terms of time and in terms of uh, performance. And therefore, um, universities have critical rules uh, to play in the, uh, the critical manpower in the minds of young people, uh, and particularly KNUST, which is the premier university of science and technology. We have been engaged in science and technology for almost 70 years. So if you look at the university, there are different departments doing so many different research, whether in the pharmaceutical industry or when you come to engineering or when you go to uh, the health sector or, or the science, uh, people are doing research, right? We have so many prototypes, so many processes so much metals within the university that uh, we need to really move them forward so that they become uh, services that uh, the country needs, they become products that we can sell within the country. Uh, let us remember we have a, a population of over 30 million, so that itself is a good market. And then we have West Africa, the rest of Africa, and the rest of the world. So. That is what we seek to do. Quite interesting uh, the way you put it, but you also made a very critical point about critical mindsets. That brings us to training, and by that I'm talking about teaching and learning. There's been concerns about teaching and learning of science in our schools. I mean, the reason our science students, our engineering students, cannot even manufacture toy cars. I see you have upped your game recently, but, I mean, but generally, what is wrong with our system and how can we make it better, Prof? Well, um, usually, you know, when young people come to the university, they have expectations, right? They have been trained at the senior high school level, so um, 
Um, if somebody wants to become an engineer, then that is the expectation. But I think that, you know, in the tertiary educational institutions, uh, higher educational institutions, you need the facilities. You need the equipment. You need the labs and workshops. That is where the students will actually have the hands-on training. It is something that um, the university is um, seeking to enhance. Don't have all the complement of uh, lab equipment, uh, but the university is making an effort, and I know government is also assisting in doing that. Okay? And then um, our teaching methods should not also be very theoretical. Uh, I think in uh, training of young people, uh, we should uh, focus more or uh, equally uh, important areas like intention, where we provide opportunities for our students to also have engagement with industry so that they know the practice uh, outside of the university. And uh, when they come back, um, we can engage with them. In every university, Professors work with uh, students, so they are considered as junior members, right? So when they go to industry, we make a follow-up, and so we will know exactly what the industry needs, and that will guide us in our teaching methods, so that we build them up to feed into the industry. And for those who are very interested in establishing their own in uh, their own businesses or their own small industries. Once they have learned the best practice through internship, uh, they will be in a better position to also establish their small industries. And uh, through that, we, we would uh, be building the, the economy uh, gradually. Mm -hmm. I think that um, uh, as a university, we are aware that we shouldn't focus too much on the theoretical inside the class teaching, but then uh, the practical teaching, the exposure uh, in uh, industries, and uh, also, you know, uh, students given the opportunity certainly to go to the field and to see what is there. And uh, one other area which is very critical for training of young people uh, is exchange, right? If there are opportunities for people to travel outside to see what is uh, done in the uh, countries that are developed. Uh, once you have a young person... All right, so Professor Obing and Dr. Shale. Professor Obing makes a point about universities and the role they also play in training these guys uh, so they can be critical thinkers or they can have that critical mindset.